Hello, my name is Ray Seifler, and I'm going to talk to you about Voronoi diagrams and procedural map generation. Voronoi diagrams are named after this man, Georgi Fedosevich Voronoi. And this is not a spelling error. His name, his last name, is, uh, is actually spelled differently than the structure after which he was named. Uh, Voronoi diagrams look like this. Voronoi himself was born in what is now Ukraine, which was actually the Russian Empire during Voronoi's lifetime. He studied at St. Petersburg University, and uh, after defending his thesis very shortly thereafter, actually became a professor at the University of Warsaw. He died young due to gallstones, only lived to be 40, but uh, he is remembered as the primary contributor to this aspect of computational geometry. Voronoi diagrams are sometimes referred to by the names of different contributors, which I'll talk about. His work, as you'll see, uh, certainly did not exist in the vacuum. So, Voronoi diagrams are actually a subset of Lie groups, which is a mathematical concept that was created by this man, Sophus Lee. He was a Norwegian mathematician from around the same time period, just before. Uh, here's the definition. and. Without getting too deeply into what differentiable manifolds and smooth structures are, they are essentially structures that allow for calculus. So they have to have some sort of meaningful mathematical construction in order to be valid. This is the Wolfram Math World definition, and I'll just read the first sentence, which is the important part. Um, the partitioning of a plane with n points into convex polygons, such that each polygon contains exactly one generating point, and every point in the given polygon is closer to its generating point than to any other. Uh, the rest of the definition gives mention to Peter Dirichlet and Alfred Thiessen, after whom these diagrams are sometimes named. Peter Dirichlet was a German mathematician whose uh, work in this area was similar, but not really as specific with regard to construction. Um, and uh, Alfred Thiessen was an American meteorologist who used this structure for interpolation of, of measurements um, in his work. So Voronoi diagrams are, are also sometimes called Dirichlet tessellations or, uh, or Thiessen polytopes. Um, so just know that if you're going to look those terms up, it, would, it usually leads back to Voronoi diagrams. <clears throat> Uh, this is the definition on Wikipedia, which is essentially the same, except for that it mentions that the points from which a Voronoi diagram is created are called seeds or sites or generators, and that a Voronoi diagram is dual to its Delaney triangulation. But what does it mean that a Voronoi diagram is the dual of its Delaney triangulation? Who is Delaney? Well, Boris Delaney, as he was known in his French and German papers was actually a Soviet Russian mathematician, uh, Delone was the last name I think in Russian, uh, who lived actually to the age of 90 and was, was inc incidentally a, also a mountain climber, so it might have something to do with it. Uh, in a Delaney triangulation, uh, the seed points themselves are nodes, and the paths between are the edges. Uh, as you can see here, and as a result, the edges of a Delaney triangulation are the perpendicular bisectors of the edges of a Voronoi diagram um, at the midpoints, uh, which is what makes them dual to each other. Um, so uh, th this will come up actually when we look at the algorithms that create Voronoi diagrams. <clears throat> And before I stop bringing up all the contributors to the idea of Voronoi diagrams, it's worth mentioning that Rene Descartes is considered uh, to be the first to use similar structures. His drawings of uh, his conception of the solar system that appeared in Principles of Philosophy were es essentially Voronoi diagrams. And the drawings and concepts that are shown aren't, aren't really significant mathematically, and Principles, Principles of Philosophy wasn't a mathematical work, it was more of a philosophical work. Um, than a mathematical one, but the core principles of Voronoi diagrams are very apparent in these drawings, and they have all the same characteristics, really. So, who cares? Um, well, there's, there's actually a pretty 
wide variety of applications for, for Voronoi diagrams. Uh, image compression often uses them to define areas with common colors, um, uh, and Voronoi diagram uh, compression works uh, very well in some of the, some of the cutting edge stuff. Uh, there are some very very cool 3D models that are that are made using Voronoi diagrams, like this rabbit here. Uh, zoology uh, also uses uh, Voronoi diagrams to define animal territories, and and then they're more and they're more generally used for textures also. Um, uh, they're also a good way to determine the best place to put a new location for a business. Um, so Voronoi diagrams are actually the answer to Newt's post office problem, which is really the same as the business location problem. The problem is, if you have a series of post office locations, how do you best determine the, mo the most effective areas of, of service for each, each location, each post office location? And, and Voronoi diagrams are the answer to that problem. Uh, they can be used also to create interesting AI paths um, and good AI paths. Um, and they're good for analyzing urban development patterns as well. And, which brings me to perhaps its most famous and useful instance, which predates the full conception of Voronoi diagrams. Um, in 1854, John Snow used the principles of Voronoi diagrams to find the root of cholera outbreak in the parish of St. James, Westminster. Um, the home address, and that map is shown at the, in the top right, the, the home addresses for, for deaths due to cholera um, in that area amounted basically to a Voronoi diagram of the Broad Street pump service area, which proved that the cause was water and not air, which was what everyone thought at the time. Um, and then there's procedural map generation, which I'll make an argument for uh, and considering all these map-like uses, uh, procedural map generation is not such a stretch. Okay, but how do we make them? How do we put these things together? Well, the easiest way to create a Voronoi diagram is to first create the Delaney triangulation, and then draw perpendicular bisectors at each edge mid midpoint to, to create the Voronoi diagram. And a lot of algorithms do this. Um, it runs, the big O is, is O of n squared, uh, which is OK. A lot of, um, a lot of working uh, Voronoi diagram creation algorithms use this um, well. Um, but there's, there's a better way, actually. Um, it's actually relatively recent. It's called Fortune's Algorithm, um, after Stephen Fortune, who published his paper, A Sweep Line Algorithm for Voronoi Diagrams, in 1986. And his algorithm employs a sweep line, naturally, that moves from one end of the diagram to the other. And so by calculating the set of points for which the sweep line and the nodes are equidistant, we find the beach line, which you can see here. And the complexity of Fortune's algorithm is, is better. Um, it, the big O is O of n log n. Um, so, so better than the flipping algorithms, and, and, and um, here, you, these links uh, are all actually implementations of the algorithm, and they're pretty fun to play with, so let's, let's open these up. Um, this one's nice, you can sort of give it a number of points, um, and, and watch the, the beach line happen. And this is this is Fortune's algorithm in action, um, animating this the how this works out looks fantastic. Um, so that's that one, and then there's also this one where you can not only move sort of the points around, but you can manually move the sweep line and see see the beach line take effect and how that how that works at each point um, so that's interesting um, and then the last one I'll show you uh, this uh, this one is, is, is good for 
if you want to separate them all into colors and see the distinct areas. So let's let's make a thousand and colorize them. You can get this pretty thing. You can repeatedly color them if you want. Um. So anyway. <clears throat> um, so is this valid? Uh, could meaning could could we use Voronoi diagrams for procedural map generation? Uh, what do you think? Uh, do these look like street maps to you? Um, they might, and maybe they don't also. Um, the, the standard way of creating Voronoi diagrams is with Euclidean distance, so all the, all the examples I've shown you so far are using Euclidean distance. So just an ordinary line. And these, these forms look a little bit like a town map, and that's okay. Uh, but uh, we can do a little bit better. Um, so, to calculate distance, distances differently um, on these diagrams and reshape the paths of edges, Minkowski distance is a very useful tool. Uh, using this formula, which you see here, we can, we can alter the way distances between two points are calculated. And Euclidean distance is equivalent, actually, to Minkowski distance when p is equal to 2. So when the variable p is equal to, to 2 in Minkowski distance, it's the same as Euclidean distance. Um, but when p is not 2, interesting things start to happen. And the image shown here is actually when, uh, when p is equal to 3, um, which looks great, I think. And th this is maybe a better representation of what a small town, uh, what a small town's roads might look like. Um, they're a little bit curvier. But I'm a New Yorker, right? And I, I don't like a lot of differently angled streets, which brings me to the other special case of Minkowski distance, which is Manhattan distance, uh, which is actually what we get when p is equal to 1. Um, and in Manhattan distance, the distance between two points is just the vertical distance um, between the points plus the horizontal distance. So it's the way you would have to travel through Manhattan you know, around Manhattan city blocks. And this is sometimes referred to as taxicab geometry. When we use this method for calculating distances in a Voronoi diagram, the edges of the diagram start to look increasingly like they are constrained by city blocks, um, which may be what you're trying to achieve. So to, to demonstrate this in action, um, I'll show you some of a video game I'm writing that generates Manhattan distance Voronoi diagrams, which I call Manhattan Edge. Um, so, uh, here at the start of the video I'm showing that these maps are randomly generated and th they generate quickly. Um, the red dots, if you're wondering, are the start of development for enemy AI. Um, they don't do anything at the moment. But the player can travel around the edges as if they were streets. and The result is effectively Pac-Man with the added dimension of diagonal directions. So if you'd like to see more of this, feel free to visit my website, which is listed here um, and contains content for this game and some other projects of mine. Um, so how am I doing this? I mean, am I, am I using an edge flipping algorithm or a fortunes algorithm to make these maps? Um, well, actually, no. I'm not, I'm not doing either one of those things. So uh, taking a closer look at the inner workings of a Manhattan edge map, you'll see that these cells are divided into eight sections, um, and and most of them are not. Um, so these ones are divided, other ones are not, right? Um, and that's because the first step of the process after determining which of these cells are seeds um, is, def is to find uh, which seed each cell is closest to. And after doing these calculations, some cells will likely be equidistant from different seeds, um, from more than one seed. So, so these cells are divided into eight pieces when there's a tie. And at this, uh, at this point, the algorithm matches each divided section with the seed closest to it, then repeats the process until all sections are appropriately filled. Um, since the checks for each cell that share more than one closest seed are all the same, and all run the same amount of time, and there can't possibly be more than the number of actual cells. Uh, this Manhattan distance Voronoi diagram algorithm actually runs in O of n, 
um, the Pico is Oven, and um, that's improved uh, over Save Fortune's uh, algorithm, but it's it's due really to the fact that everything that it's with Manhattan distance um, as opposed to Euclidean, which simplifies the process um, and requires sort of uh, fewer fewer steps. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you've learned something about Voronoi diagrams and uh, enjoyed watching this. So.